Yeah, I think that's probably right. I mean, I think they'll obviously be keeping a close eye on Omicron, um, which, you know, it's a little bit mixed, right? Um, it's not so severe, perhaps, although cases are rising, perhaps it affects children, so there might be some behavioral issues. So there's that. Um, there's the much slower than expected um, payrolls number, as you said, but there's also a dip in the unemployment rate. Um, so a lot of things moving around um, in, let's call it a, this, this late pandemic uh, economy. I, I think the bottom line is they're probably going to go ahead in the direction of accelerating the taper, um, and then maybe try to keep the um, the rate hiking path um, somewhat, you know, keep keep a lot of optionality there. But I think there's no mistaking it, right? We've turned a corner on uh, on monetary policy, and we're probably going to see um, more places, more countries, more central banks withdrawing the emergency um, stimulus for for some time now. Mm. Anna, what does the collapse in the price of Bitcoin tell us about the appetite for risk right now? Um, yeah, look, I think um, it's it's not exactly a full-blown risk-off environment, but it's um, it's a volatile environment, which is obviously going to make it much more challenging for highly volatile assets that don't have any um, any, any income or yield, um, such as Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. I think you know the real story in Bitcoin and and indeed other cryptocurrencies is more about the technology and what can be accomplished with that uh, than you know really thinking of them as currencies as such. Um, they're probably more of um, a kind of a metric of, as you say, of risk appetite, uh, and that is a little bit under pressure. And I think we're looking at a, a year end, uh, and indeed a year of 2022, it's going to be a bit of a volatile and, and sort of, let's say, transitional year, right, as we try to continue to emerge from the pandemic. 